Hello and welcome to Algebra 2 CST release question number 46. It says, what are the x-intercepts of the graph of y equals 12x squared minus 5x minus 2? So x-intercepts, what does that mean? x-intercepts, er, red, come back to me red, there you are. x-intercepts, this is where, where y equals zero. So if you think of x-intercepts just in, in general, real quick graph to help visualize that. This is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. x-intercepts are where it crosses the x-axis. And so maybe you have an x-intercept here and here, for instance. That's where y has to equal zero. y equals zero for x-intercepts. So that's not what the x-intercepts are here, necessarily, and looking at the answer choice is definitely not what the x-intercepts are here. But that's just to, to realize what to do. What am I going to fill in with y? Well, since y has to equal 0 when I'm talking about x-intercepts, this becomes 0 equals 12x squared minus 5x minus 2. So I'm solving for x. That's what I'm doing here. I could use the quadratic formula, but it looks like these should work out nicely if I factor them out. So I'm going to try factoring instead and I should be able to get the right combination. So I'm looking for the combination that gives me a positive 12 here and here. So I have to have something in front of the x and something in front of the x potentially. I could have 12x and 1x, uh, but basically what I'm looking for are the possible factors of 12. What might work there and the factors of two, and I should say negative two because it's a negative two right here. And so I could have one and 12, I could have two and six, I could have three and four. And those could also be flip-flopped. I could put those either place. So I could have one and 12 here or 12 and one here. I could have two and six or six and two. And likewise, three and four or four and three. And the factors of negative two, there's only one way really to get two. It's just one times two, but one would have to be positive, one would have to be negative. And so I could have either that or that, or these things flip-flopped. So there's, there's other ways, there's more algorithmic ways to do this, um, but I think for most people, just writing out the factors when it's relatively simple like this, and then just trying the different combinations until you get the one that actually works, I think that's the best way to do something like this. And so let's try, uh, it looks like this number in the middle is fairly small, so one in 12, that's a pretty big discrepancy. I'm going to go with I'm going to go with 3 and 4 first. I'm going to try that and work my way up if 3 and 4 doesn't work. So let's try 3 here and 4 here. Let's just see if that works out. And so I know that one of them's got to be positive, one's got to be negative to get a negative product. And if I put a 1 right here, let's try that and a 2 right here. And if I were to foil this back out, I know the first terms with these being the factors that would have to work out to be 12x squared. I know the last terms, being the factors that I had here, would have to work out to get me that, negative 2. But what do my outside and inside pieces give me? So outside, I would have 3x times negative 2 would be negative 6x. Inside, I would have positive 4x. Now, if I put those two things together, do I get negative 5x? No, I get negative 2x. So it looks like that's not the right combination. And I'm glad that one didn't work out at least because it's good to see, or good to try different values. Uh, good to see that it's not always going to work out the first time you try to plug something in. So we just had a 1 and a negative 2 there. Let's flip-flop those around. Let's try a positive 2 now here and a negative 1 here. And let's see what that gives me. So it looks like this would give me, on the outside, negative 3x. And this would give me positive 8x. So I put those together, I get positive 5x, but I wanted negative 5x. So to me, it looks like I'm really close. I just need to change one thing. I just need to change this and this and flip the signs around or make those the opposite of what they were before. So if I make this negative 2, make this a positive 1, still going to multiply together to get me that negative 2 that I need at the end. Um, but by doing so, by doing that, this changes to positive 3x. And then this one changes to negative 8x. Putting those things together, the sum of 
negative 8x plus 3x would be negative 5x, just like it should be right here. And so that is the right combination. That's what works. And so we're going to take this as one factor, set it equal to 0. So 3x minus 2 could equal 0, because if that was 0, 0 times who cares what this is, is still going to be 0. And then we could have that, or we could have 4x plus 1 equal to 0. If we have this part equals 0, 0 times, doesn't matter what that is, would be 0. So these are our two possibilities. If I add 2 and divide by 3, I'd get x equals 2 thirds. Now I, I bet that some of you could just look at this and realize, oh yeah, 2 times 3, or 2 over 3 times 3 would give me 2, 2 minus 2 would be 0. Yeah, you could think of it like that too, but it's good to, to see it written out, I think, and to solve it algebraically as well for those that can't see that. So we have 4 x equals negative 1, divide it by 4, and you get x equals negative 1 over 4. So two possibilities. You've got positive 2 thirds, and x is negative 1 over 4. Looks like that, my friends, is choice C.